For more on what all this means about the state of American democracy at large, I'm joined by Madeleine Albright, our country's first female secretary of state, a member of the National Council on Election uh, Integrity, also the author of the book about the insightful but troubling book, Fascism, A Warning. Um, Madam Secretary, obviously there is an international context here when we talk about the health and vibrancy of democracies and something that we see across the world in democracies in different states of either degradation or ascension are battles over these kinds of things, election monitors, uh, whether uh, the courts are throwing parties off the ballot and such. In that context, what, is, what, what strikes you when you survey what we're seeing now in this country five days before the election? Well, Chris, it's good to be with you, but and I agreed with everything you said at the beginning. What strikes me is that we have lost the element of what democracy is about. The rule of law, the importance of a free media, uh, not a situation where one group is made to hate the other one and sees them as the enemy, uh, and basically dishonesty about so many various aspects and voting is the basis of democracy. And everything that you've been saying uh, has undercut uh, the various parts that make democracy viable and had made, had, and I have uh, really underlined the past, uh, a model that other countries were looking to in terms of how democracy works. And now we have allied ourselves, thanks to President Trump, with some of the worst activities that are going on in countries that have authoritarian leaders and lean towards fascism. You know, there's a concept uh, in international relations I recently came across about the notion of free but unfair elections. Uh, the idea being that, you know, people are allowed to vote and that they run elections. It's just that uh, the state uses its force or the regime uses its, its, its abilities to put a thumb on the scale uh, to tilt it. And there's lots of places, Turkey under Erdogan, I think, is a pretty great example of, of that kind of thing, where there are elections and sometimes uh, Erdogan's party, AKP, actually loses, like that they are actual elections, but they do everything in their power to make them not fair. And I wonder how far or close to that kind of setting we are here in the U.S. as, as you watch the Trump administration try to use some of the levers of government uh, to pursue their, their electoral interests. I think they are trying to do that in every way, discrediting what is going on and already saying that the elections are rigged or that the Postal Service doesn't work or um, that we've never voted before. I mean, you'd think we were a brand new country. We have been voting. And so they are undermining the very kind of trust and activities that go with a free election. Uh, and they seem to be learning uh, a lot of the nasty tricks that are uh, being done in other countries where, in fact, there is not a count uh, or there are ways of putting the finger on the scale and then declaring that the election was not fair and all the various things that we are now hearing from a, an elected president who seems to have forgotten what it is to be an American that believes in democracy and a free vote. Something that has struck me as we, co we, we, we cover these legal cases is that at a deeper level, you know, trust, social trust, the bedrocks of institutional trust are prior to the law. I mean, there can be legal disputes and legal conflicts, but to the extent that societies nonviolently resolve conflict, uh, are able to transition power, the fundamental thing that rests on more than the rule of law or lawyers or, or, or judges is, is some fundamental bedrock of social trust. And do, do, does America have that right now? Well, I think that there has been a concerted effect uh, really attempt to destroy that kind of trust by pitting one group against another and making one group look as though they are not loyal patriotic Americans, while the others are persuaded that they are making America great. And so the thing that you have very uh, correctly pointed out is the basis of trust. We are being taught to hate the others, to delegitimize the others, to think the others wish us ill, uh, and that they are the ones that are destroying the system. And this is the very hard part. In my book, I really have felt that it is important to talk to people with whom you disagree mm -hmm. to find out what's behind it. But this way, what is going on, there is fear being perpetuated that one group uh, has undermined the system and that kind of trust uh, is being eroded. And, and I'm so worried that we are eroding democracy. Chris, I am an immigrant to this country. I came 
because fascism came to the country that I was born in Czechoslovakia and then communism came. And I have had faith in the democratic system in this country and the fact that people are able to vote and be counted freely and that we know the basis of democracy. And I am more than troubled by the fact that we have a president who is seeking re-election on the basis of lies, of dividing us further, of uh, not being able to understand what the problems of our society are, and allying himself with some of the worst authoritarian dictatorial leaders in the world and declaring more allegiance to them than to our own people and our system of checks and balances. Former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, always a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Good to be with you, Chris. Thank you. Tonight